In today's video, I want to take a look at how to execute other programs inside your program. So here we have just a simple a blank C program. And what we want to do is to execute, for example, the ping command. Right, so here, let me open a CMD. And here I have just a simple CMD. And what I can do is just say ping google.com. Right, and it's going to start pinging and showing it on the, on the screen. How can I do that from within my program? Right? Uh, to do that, we have to use a set of functions called, uh, well, the exec family of functions. And those are uh, standard in Linux. And here we have uh, a sort of emulation of that on Windows, right? But they are going to be more or less the same. So what we're doing here is basically uh, applicable for both Linux and Windows in this case. First, we have to include a uh, header here. And the header for Windows is process.h. Process.h. And for Linux, it's, it's uh, unistd.h. So to start off, we have to actually call a function called underscore execl. So execl, what it does is basically taking a file name to an executable and execute that well, executable with certain arguments. So the second, third, and fourth, and so on and so forth are going to be the arguments for that program. <clears throat> First, the file name. Well, we have to pass in here, let's say the, the file the file path to my uh, to my ping.exe program is actually uh, c backslash backslash windows backslash backslash um, system32 and then ping.exe. Okay, and this is gonna execute. This is gonna execute the ping.exe program. Now, the next arguments, the next arguments to this function call are the actual arguments that are gonna go to the program. Which arguments? These guys. These are this argv is what we have to pass in from here on out. So the second, the third, the fourth, and so on parameters have to be those uh, parameters there. And the arguments actually have a specific format to them. So the first argument, it's always going to have to be the path that we have executed. So we actually have to pass in this path a second time. Okay, so that's the first argument. Now the second argument is actually going to be the, well, the first argument to our program, which is, in our case, it was google.com, right? We just said ping google.com. This is where we would actually add it. But first, let me actually make some space for it. So I'm going to have some uh, line breaks here so that we can properly see what's going on. So here, the next argument is going to be google.com. OK. And now, if we don't have any more arguments to pass to this uh, program that we're trying to, to actually launch, we have to pass in a null pointer. right? So the last parameter to this, uh, to this exec l call has to be a null. Otherwise, the, the program is not going to work. And that's really all there is to it. So the path to the program, the again, the path to the program a second time, then the actual arguments for the program, and then a null at the end. If I try to run this, you'll notice that we actually get the pinging google.com uh, set of instructions. And it's actually doing its job pretty well. And if I end it, it's going to actually give me an average and everything else. Cool. Now, what if we want to print something after this? So if I say printf, uh, let's say program finished executing. Or not program, let's say ping here. Ping finished executing. Right? Because, well, after, after executing this, I kind of want to see that this guy has executed successfully or something like that. And that has finished executing. If I run it, well, that's going to be the pings. I'm going to wait a bit and we don't actually see our message anywhere else inside here. No, I didn't forget to compile. The issue is that this, this exec L and all the exec functions what they actually do is instead of just uh, sort of, so you have this process, right? This exec process, and then you have the ping process, right? Uh, this exec function doesn't just uh, sort of launch a new process and 
waits until it finishes and then comes back to execute the rest of the process from the main uh, the main function that we have here. It doesn't do that. It actually what it does is it takes the new ping process and puts it on top of it, basically overwriting everything that we had before, right? Not only just the memory, but the actual execution, uh, well, order, right? So we no longer, after this guy, we no longer are in our own program. We, we are executing this ping program and that's it, right? Once the ping program is done executing, we are done. Nothing can happen after it unless there's an issue. Unless, for example, I uh, mess it up and say pings, for example, and if I try to run this, as you can see, it does print on the screen the ping finished executing. That's because this guy did not actually work properly. Right. So if I change it back to ping.exe, it's actually going to work and we're not going to get uh, that message anymore. But this is kind of tedious, like, can't I just say ping like I say in the command prompt instead of actually passing in the path to it? Can't I just say simply ping like this? Well, almost, but you have to use a slightly different function. Instead of exec l, you have to use exec lp or an exec function that has a p in it. That uh, tells, basically, that p in there tells the exec function to actually use the path variable. The path variable is the one that's loaded automatically in the command prompt. So when you type something in, it's automatically going to look at all the directories that you have added there. And of course, uh, this ping program is in there and it's found, right? And this p here adds that path to our executing space. And you can say here ping as well if you wanted to. We don't really have to specify the path. And if I run this, I'm also going to get a ping to google.com. So that works properly. Now there's a few more variations of this exec function. So we have exec with L with a P. L stands for a list of arguments, right? So here we executed the ping program with a list of arguments, right? That we have actually typed in here. Instead of an L, you can have a V from a vector. So if you have exec VP in this case, uh, instead of passing in arguments as uh, arguments to this call, you have to have a an array. So we're going to actually have to have an array here. So an, an array of strings, right? And this guy will have our parameters here. So we're going to say, well, the first one was ping, then the next one was google.com. And then the last one was uh, no, like that. Now, if we try to change to pass this here, so our array of arguments to be passed to this exec VP, so not LP, you'll notice that, well, it works the same way. We have google.com here. And there's one more letter you can add to this exec function that is the E letter. So if I call in with exec VPE, you can take a look at the actual signature. It says uh, environment. So you can pass in an environment. What does that mean? Well, that's basically another, uh, well, uh, it's a set of variables that you can pass to this through another array. So here I can define my own environment saying char. So another string array. So I'm going to call it env and uh, just to define one variable here is going to be test equals, let's say, environment variable. And then again, this has to end with a null, just like the array here, just like the list of arguments. So in this case, we would have a uh, third parameter called NV that we pass in here. And what that will do is if you've watched the main function video where I talked about the nfp variable. So here if we add actually char pointer nfp and p like that, uh, this guy is really the one that we pass here. Right. So in our case, we're going to have this uh, test variable that's going to have the value environment variable. Right. So I hope this makes sense. So all the other exec functions are actually just a combination of these, well, four letters. So V, 
L, P, and E. So exec then has to be either V or L, so that V is basically for a uh, for this array, right? Or you can specify L and then pass it pass them as uh, just a list of arguments like so, all right? And uh, the next one is P that is optional or E that is also optional. So P specifies that I want to use the path uh, variable and E specifies that I want to pass also an environment to this new to this uh, newly created uh, program. And if I run if I run this, it's going to work properly. It, I think ping doesn't really care what uh, environment you pass to it. So it's going to work. Now, one last thing is if you actually if your code actually goes and executes this line of code, that means that the uh, exact function failed to run, right? Uh, how do you know why it failed to run? Well, that's through the error no uh, variable. So if I include here error no dot h, and if I try to let's say save it inside the variables, and then say just int let's say error called error no. And uh, let's breakpoint here, but you'll notice, well, breakpointing here doesn't do anything because right now the program is executing properly. But let's say ping, uh, let's say ping two, for example. And if I try to run this, we should actually hit the breakpoint because ping two doesn't exist, right? And here, if I, well, let me delete all these and say error, you're gonna notice that we get two on this error no variable. What you can do to find the significance of this is go to error.h and somewhere down here there's a list of error codes and you can take a look at two. Two says n or e no end. That means that there wasn't a file with that name found, right? Or no path to that file was found. So something along the lines of, okay, the executable name is wrong or the path to it is wrong or something like that. So this is what it's telling us right now. And there are all sorts of error, error codes. Not all of them apply to our uh, exec functions, but some of them are here and uh, you should possibly even uh, make a switch statement or just an if else chain to check this error, what it uh, returned. And of course, if you actually correct this issue, if I, if I launch this, the ping program is gonna run and I'm not uh, gonna actually hit the breakpoint because again, the process after right after this function has been called has been replaced. And that's really all there is to it. Um, on Linux, you have the same exact functions, but I think without the underscore, I'm not sure if that's deprecated as well on Linux, but on here, if you try without underscore, those functions do exist, but when I try to, uh, build it, it's actually going to give me an error and specifying that, okay, I need, to, I need to actually uh, add a uh, constant, add a macro somewhere to actually stop this error, right? So since now these names are actually in the ISO, either way, uh, on Linux, it's either with or without the underscore. And instead of process.h, you have to use unistd.h. And it's more or less the same, uh, the same thing here. And of course, what you, what you can try here is to actually launch your own programs using this uh, exact functions. You can do that pretty easily without even specifying it, without even adding it to the path variable. You can just specify the path to it right here to the exe and then launch it as uh, as is, as long as you're actually using these uh, argc and argv. This is where they come in useful when you try to launch a program from another program or launch a program from the command line and so on and so forth. Well, that's about it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.